Clinicians should not be afraid to work with children who speak uh, speak differently than they do. Uh, I like to think of um, dialects and second language learners as having really wonderful instruments, this instrument called language. And what do we do when we meet a musician? We sit and we listen and we ask them questions about um, how they do what they do with their instrument. And so when you approach uh, language that way, um, it's really it's fun. It's enjoyable to assess language ability in a in a variety that you don't speak, and it's enjoyable to work with children and help them improve. Probably the hardest thing is we're all we're afraid that we're going to misidentify a child. We are so afraid that we're going to call something an impairment when it's really a language difference. Uh, but if you think about it, um, if children are learning French and they're language impaired their language impairment shows up in their French. If they're learning German, it shows up in their German. So if they're language impaired and they speak African American English or Southern white English or they're learning English as a second language because their first language is Spanish or Mandarin, their impairment is going to show up in that dialect. So we have to start getting comfortable with sitting back, listening to children's language that they're giving us and ask the question, what makes this child have a strong system and what makes this other child have a weak system? And quit comparing it to general American English. Well, one of the things I do in class, which I found really helpful, is I buy everybody a notebook in class and we, um, we name our night notebooks. Sometimes it takes a month to name it, but I would do this with my students as well. Uh, my dialect notebook is called um, Diary of a Dialect Diva. I have another student in my class who calls hers Who Dat? because she's from New Orleans. Um, another student calls her dialect, dialectable dialects. And so when you approach it that way, you begin listening um, and you start writing down what children are saying. And it's, um, instead of asking children to code switch or change how they're saying something, you have conversations about, wow, I say it this way, you say it this way, or I use that word at home. Um, my husband uses the word this way. And so one of the things that happens with the notebooks is you start realizing that you use, you in, as an individual, use lots of different varieties of language. When you text, when you talk on the phone to strangers, when you talk to people you know, you start noticing your family uh, using language in different ways. And so you become really curious. When you approach a child being curious about their language, it's totally different than when you approach them as the person who's going to correct them.